the name of this channel is uh, right now the polymath so i've actually changed the name of the channel from the world of x uh, into the polymath and i think i would do a great disservice uh, if i wouldn't actually um make a review of one of one of the books that actually made me change the name of uh, the channel so this book is the polymath by wakas wakas Ahmed. So uh, I want to actually, um, I just finished this book a couple of days ago and I want to actually um, share, I want to share some of my notes from this book. Now the polymath is, uh, unlike you would uh, think, so, you know the saying, jack of all trades, master of none. But in this case, the polymath is someone who's jack of all trades, master of many. And uh, I think this actually goes against the grain when it comes to uh, the modern uh, convention, if I can put it that way, when uh, people or the society expects from you to be or to aspire to expertise in whatever your field of choice but in this case if you strive to be a polymath you actually you have an entire lifetime so you have a lifetime of uh, acing so a lifetime of acing multiple fields multiple fields okay so in this case uh, one of the biggest advantages of trying to be a polymath and unlocking the power of human versatility is that if you gain deep insight and deep skill and deep expertise in one field you are going to be able to use that sort of expertise into other fields as well so that's why that's what that's one of the uh, major key points that draws from this book so uh, you learn a skill in one field and you apply it so one field you apply it to another field and this actually this actually doesn't happen if you're an expert in a certain field now let's actually see um let's actually see my notebook and i'm actually going to so these are all the highlights from the book and i'm actually uh, going to post them somewhere in the description of this video so we are three minutes in and i'm gonna try to keep this uh less than 10 minutes so the first highlight Polymath in modern societies run the risk of shallowness and so polymathy in modern societies run the risk of shallowness and amateurism. We are aware of the stigma that a polymath is a jack of all trades and a master of none, but uh, there's an older expanded version. A jack of all trades is a master of none, but other but often better than a master of one so yeah well jack of all trades master of none as i said jack of all trades master of many in this case all right moving on uh so as you can see here a mind that is stretched by a new experience can never go back to its old dimensions now let that sink in Let's see. So, in all cases, let's look into this one. So, in all cases, the prerequisites, as mentioned earlier, is an exceptional cross domain versatility. So, as I was saying, cross domain versatility, but the greatest, most influential, most self actualized polymaths or essential self-seeking holistic minded connection forming humans characterized by a boundless curiosity outstanding intelligence and wondrous creativity now what i think that the most important or the underlying feature of someone who 
aspires to be a polymath is this boundless curiosity. So without the curiosity, there is no polymathy or polymath. Curiosity and maybe a little bit of imagination. So curiosity plus imagination are the two most important features of the modern and not only the modern but the future and the ancient polymath okay now going back okay not that back where was it over here so going back here let's see one of the most uh, so we have as you can see here uh, in this uh, notebook here in the Kindle we have uh, these are the chapters where and the location so I have the chapter and the location this is something about Leonardo now we have the myth of the specialist Let's look at this example. So let's look at um, Edwin Hubble excelled in athletics. So this would be a case of a polymath. Was an amateur boxer and angler. Served as a soldier in the U.S. Army during the World War I. Qualified as a lawyer. Coached basketball and taught Spanish before ultimately becoming the, nose, the Nobel Prize winning astronomer whose name was given to the landmark Hubble telescope. Now think about that. You say that a polymath is a master of none. But this Edwin Bubble is an excellent case of master of any. So athletics, boxer, angler, soldier, lawyer, basketball. Spanish. Wow. And then Nobel Prize astronomer. Okay, now let that sink in. Let's go back to the list. Two more minutes. So, JF Kennedy. I think this is the most I think this is the most extraordinary collection of talent human knowledge that has ever been Let's see what's what this is all about. What is the context? Okay, so so much so that at a dinner hosting various Nobel laureates at the White House, Jeff Kennedy famously joked, I think this is the most extraordinary collection of talent, human knowledge that has ever been gathered together in the White House with the possible exception of when Thomas Jefferson died, <laughs> died alone. <laughs> so he had, uh, JFK had a great sense of humor with this. Okay, let's go back to my notebooks. So intellectuals, so a polymath would be a multi-specialist. Mastering their fields either simultaneously or in succession so it might be very hard to master different fields simultaneously which is why in succession would make much more sense now i think this would be um this would be a description of polymaths discoverers producers disseminators of no disseminators of knowledge work study reflect speculate or on or ask and answer questions. Let's move on. Now, throughout this entire book, there are um, a whole host of examples of people throughout history that have been um, recognized as polymaths. And these are actually uh, very big motivators, motivators, not only for me, but I believe uh, these are motivators for uh, everyone who's actually uh, trying to go against the grain, to go against 
the the fact that uh, you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to be specialized in a certain field alone because that would be boring now for example in my case um i think that i am driven by a uh, very strong so i think i have a very strong sense of curiosity and this uh sense or I don't know, characteristic of curiosity of mine. I think, uh, or this craving for curiosity or knowledge cannot be satisfied, uh, or it would be more difficult to be satisfied if I focus on a certain field alone. I mean, I think, for example, uh, let's take uh, uh, my uh, work in cybersecurity. I could satisfy my and that's probably one of the reasons that I've chosen cybersecurity as one of my my biggest interests because uh, it's very broad you can adopt a very um a very large perspective and in cybersecurity alone you you can develop expertise in multiple subfields of cybersecurity and all of these are driven by curiosity but taking Taking a step back and looking uh, from a higher perspective, um, I think uh, curiosity, in my case, is what uh, cannot be satisfied by trying to um, focus on a certain field alone. So there are times when my work in cybersecurity gets not necessarily boring, but a little bit uh, sort of like frustrating. And when I feel like I'm getting stuck into something, I, I feel that I want to take a step back. And in that case, um, I move on to other interests. And uh, another interest, uh, deep interest of mine is machine learning. And I've done a lot of work in machine learning. Um, I'm also, I've also written a couple of books a few years back. So I'm interested in researching um, human physiology if i can put it simply i'm also doing uh, stuff when it comes to development coding uh python developing so this uh, this actually pivoting between fields in my case is what keeps my curiosity um stimulated because otherwise, if I would be focusing on only one field at a time for indefinitely, um, I don't think I would be satisfied. So in this case, uh, now the price, the price in this case, I would say that, and I'm actually completely fine with this. I don't want to be the greatest so I don't want to be the greatest. No, I don't want to be the greatest in cyber. I don't want to be the greatest in ML. I don't want to be the greatest Python developer. I don't want to be the greatest all of my interests. What I want is, and I'm actually going to achieve this, I want to become very good in all of these fields and of course uh, I didn't talk about math so I love math and I'm actually going to do more videos um, more math videos on the channel now uh, I think I've gone a little bit uh, too long with the video so we are 14 minutes in I'm going to finish uh, here now and maybe 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 continue with uh, because since since the the name of the channel is the polymath i want to actually i should be making i should be making uh, more videos on uh, the highlights from this very amazing book the polymath by wakas ahmed and there are more books on the topic of polymathy that are on my uh list and i will probably go in details uh, after I finish them on this channel. So 
be on the lookout for that.